In today's video, we're going to continue our 2018 NHL Top Prospect Series, where we take a look at all 31 NHL teams' top prospect pools, including their full 2018 NHL draft selections. We have a special guest joining us today, and we're discussing the Pittsburgh Penguins. And that's coming up next. Hey everyone and welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. We review and discuss all 31 NHL teams. So if you're a huge hockey fan, consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So as I mentioned off the top here, today we're discussing the Pittsburgh Penguins' top prospects. And I have a special guest joining us today to help do so. His name is Justin and his channel is called Yinzer on Hockey. His link is down below in the description. So upon completion of this video, I highly recommend you go check out his channel and consider subscribing. Justin's a huge Penguins fan and he does cover the Penguins quite heavily on his channel, but he does also focus on other teams, mostly in the Metropolitan Division. As we've done in previous collaboration type videos discussing top prospects, we're going to kind of go back and forth here. I'm going to kick things off with the first prospect, then I'm going to throw it over to Justin for the next one and so on and so forth. The first prospect we're going to discuss today is the Pittsburgh Penguins second round selection in the 2018 NHL draft and that's Philip. Hallander. Now, Philip Hallander hails from Sweden. He's a center riceman, but can also play wing. He likely projects to likely be a left winger at the NHL level. He is capable of playing all three forward positions as well, so he's very versatile. He's got pretty good size, 6'2", around 190 pounds, so he certainly has a pretty good sturdy frame, which puts him ready for the NHL here sometime soon. Hallander's got pretty good offensive instincts, but he's also a really solid two-way player as well. Uh, he's certainly not afraid to use that size to go to the net, work hard in the corners along the boards. Kind of reminds me a little bit of a Patrick Hornfist. He doesn't play exactly like Hornfist, but he does certainly remind me of him a little bit, where he's very tenacious, uh, not afraid to go to the net and get to that dirty areas to score some big goals. When I've seen Hallander play, it does appear as though he's got pretty good hands. He's really good in tight around the net. He's a good skater, pretty good playmaker as well. Uh, at this point in time, it appears as though he's going to play over in Sweden for one more year before making the jump over to North America. Uh, likely get some time in the American Hockey League next season, but it wouldn't be a complete shocker depending on the Penguins roster situation that he might get a shot next year. Uh, at this point in time where he could be a left winger at the NHL level, I could see him actually fitting nicely on the left side of either Crosby or Malkin. I do think he is a very intelligent player and he's smart enough and quick enough to keep up with players like that. Um, so I can see him maybe being a guy who could fit in on a wing with one of those top two center icemen. Yo ho everybody, my name is Justin. I run a YouTube channel called Yinzer on Hockey. And I would like to uh, take a minute to thank Mike from Top Shelf Hockey for allowing me to come on his channel and help give you guys a better understanding a little bit about the Pittsburgh Penguins prospect pool. Um, you would think a team that has the NHL level talent that the Penguins do right now that their prospect pool is probably waning a little bit and that's partially true but there is uh, quite a few guys that could make an impact in the near future for the Penguins and uh, I want to give you my take on a couple of these guys right now. First guy I want to uh, introduce you guys to is Jordy Bellarive. Um Jordy Bellarive. Uh, played last year in the uh, WHL for the Lethbridge Hurricanes. Had a little bit of a hiccup in the offseason. Uh, it was a bachelor party and there was a campfire accident. Um, he ended up with some severe burns on him, but he has recovered, started skating again. He's back into his full offseason routine. He's getting ready to go. Uh, so last year for Lethbridge, uh, during the regular season, had 92 points in 71 games. Uh, he's a center iceman, left-handed, born in 1999. A uh, bit on the smaller side, 5'10", 196, so not gigantic, um, but uh, pretty healthy for his, his height. Uh, in the playoffs last year, he did net 25 points in 16 games, uh, again in the WHL, and with the Penguins' depth at center, this isn't a guy that you're likely to see this year. Uh, as many are projecting, he's probably going back to the WHL for for one more year. and going to play out out there. Um, but as far as his skill set and what you can expect from him when he does uh, finally emerge on the scene, which I'm assuming will probably be possibly out of camp next season, uh, he's a very good skater, um, great on his edges, um, very good first step. Uh, offensively, 
the output kind of speaks for itself. Again, 92 points in 71 games. He's pretty offensively gifted. Uh, as far as his defense, he kind of plays like an agitator type role from from center ice, uh, kind of reminiscent of a Patrick Hornquist. Kind of plays a similar style. Goes in front of the net, plays in the dirty areas, um, but plays very good uh, out of his own zone. Um, very quick on his stride, able to assist the transition game, things like that. Uh, like I said, most likely headed back to the WHL for one more year, but next year the Penguin center ice position, um, Broussard is a free agent, Grant's a free agent, um, Shahan only signed a one-year contract, Matt Collins likely to go to retirement, so um, if the Penguins don't find something via free agency or or through a trade, then you could see Jordy Bellarif possibly uh, cracking that roster next year. Uh, and there's a lot of really good potential here that you can see when you watch some of his highlights and some of his clips that he has a very good vision of the ice and he skates very well. His game is very catered to the NHL style and I think he is going to transition well when he gets that opportunity. Next up, we've got undrafted college free agent signing out of Northeastern University. We have Zach Aston Reese. Now, Aston Reese has some pretty good size to him. Made his debut last year in the NHL. Suffered a pretty significant injury in the playoffs against the Washington Capitals from a big hit from Tom Wilson. Ended up suffering a broken jaw as well as a concussion. It does appear, though, this offseason that he's recovered well. The concussion symptoms seem to go away fairly quick, which was good. His jaws recovered nicely, so he should be good to go for training camp for the 18-19 season. He got into 41 games at the American Hockey League level before getting called up last year. Put up 29 points, so fairly impressive offensive instincts at that level. Uh, he certainly can play that physical style of game, you know, potential power forward type. Um, but based on his projections, I wouldn't be surprised to see Aston Reese be more of a bottom six player. More than likely be like a third line player, I think is where he fits best. Uh, he can certainly play that defensive type two-way role uh, with some offensive upside. You know, play that physical role as well. Um, so that's kind of where I see him projecting. Obviously, he's had a chance to play some NHL games. Uh, you know, he has had an attempt to play in the top six as well. But personally, I think some other players might pass him on the depth chart to have those opportunities. And I see him being more of a third line type player. During his opportunity with the Penguins last year at the NHL level, he played in 16 games and put up six points. And all indications are that he is very likely to make the team into training camp and get a bigger opportunity this season. The other prospect I want to talk to you guys about is Zachary Lawson. Zachary Lawson, we drafted in the second round of the 2017 entry draft. This is the guy that we acquired as part of the Ryan Reeves trade. Uh, picked him up with that pick that we swapped with St. Louis. Uh, a lot of people speculated that this was a little bit of a reach uh, for a guy like Zach Lawson because he's had some injury concerns through through his time. Um, he missed most of last year, only played 25 games in the uh, Quebec Major Junior. So you want to see him get a full healthy season in. But the Penguins' defensive prospect pool right now is pretty thin. So if he can make an impact in camp, and he will get a, a camp invite, uh, if he can make an impact in camp and they decide that he makes enough of an impact to stay in Wilkes-Barre, then you could see him as an injury call-up late in the season or, or partway through the season because the Penguins are very thin on defense. And that's something that you could look for. Um, he's a guy, the scouting reports on him had him compared to uh, Mark Edward Vlasic, which if he ever lives up to that would be... a uh, a great uh that's a great comparison to make to him if he lives up to those expectations uh stats over the past couple of years uh playing with uh Roy Naranda Huskies of the uh Quebec Major Junior Hockey League like i said last year 25 games only 4 points the year before 63 games 3 goals 18 assists 21 points so he's not an offensively gifted defenseman, but he does 
uh, play very well on his defensive uh, responsibilities. In 2016 and 17, he was a plus 42. Um, so he's a guy that plays very responsibly in his own zone. And that's kind of an asset that the Penguins are also lacking on their defense a little bit as well. Um, is, is a very responsible, defensive-minded defenseman. Outside of uh, Brian Dumoulin, we don't have many of those straightforward, stay-at-home type defensemen. So he's going to be a good addition in the near future, um, so long as his health holds up. And that's that's been a scare, obviously, over the past couple of years. So if he's able to stay healthy... Uh, mold his offensive game a little bit to get a little bit more involved in the offensive side of things and uh, fine-tune his skating, you could see him having a very good crack at the Penguins roster in the next couple of years. Again, only 19 years old, so he still has time to develop and uh, hone his game a little bit. So those are a couple of prospects that you know, you can start to do a little bit of research on and start to familiarize yourself with because these are a couple of prospects that I think are going to eventually make an impact uh, for the Pittsburgh Penguins at the NHL level. Um, again, I'd like to say thanks to, to Mike, Top Shelf Hockey. Uh, make sure you guys stay subscribed to his channel. He puts out some of the best hockey content on YouTube. And uh, thanks again for having me, Mike. And uh, be sure to check out my channel. It's uh, Yinzer on Hockey. I primarily focus on the Metropolitan Division and the Pittsburgh Penguins is my strong suit. So uh, be sure to check out my channel. And uh, thanks for having me again, Mike. And we'll see you guys next time. Now, last but not least, here we have 2015 second round selection drafted out of the QMJHL, Daniel Sprong. Now, Sprong has been with the organization for a few years now. Originally got a chance in the NHL, went back to junior. Uh, they kind of felt like his development might have slowed down. Uh, he went back, had a chance to play some big minutes and big situations in the junior uh, and, and play some big role for the Charlotte Town Islanders. At this point in time, Sprong has played 26 NHL games. He scored four goals and one assist for five points. So certainly given limited opportunity, uh, they give him a little bit more time to develop within the Junior League as well as a little bit of time in the American Hockey League as well. I do think this year could be the year, though, that Sprong makes the NHL full-time. Uh, he's certainly been a sniper in the past. He's pretty quick, and he's got a great shot, and he has the potential to be a top-six scoring winger. I certainly think it's quite possible with the way the roster is here with the Penguins this year that the likelihood of him sticking with the club for a full season is more than likely going to happen this season. Uh, we'll see how he does. Hopefully he can get a chance to play a little bit more of an offensive role. Now that we covered all the Penguins' top prospects, I want to take a quick summary here of all their selections from the 2018 NHL Draft. So I'm going to put a graphic here full screen to show you the full summary and we'll go through each player here one by one. Now, the Penguins were a little bit low on draft choices this year. They did not hold a first-round selection. Uh, their first pick was number 53 overall in the second round, where they selected a defenseman from the Western Hockey League's Lethbridge Hurricanes, Kalen Addison. Now, Addison is a pretty solid defensive prospect. Uh, likely will be a little further away, I think, from making the NHL than Philip Hallander, who was their next pick, who we talked about earlier. Uh, but Al Addison is a very solid defensive prospect. Now, as I mentioned, Hallander was their second pick, number 58 overall, center iceman slash winger out of Sweden. Uh, obviously, we discussed him at greater length already. Then they did not have another selection until the fifth round, where they selected a center iceman from the Moose Jaw Warriors in the Western Hockey League, Justin Almeida, number 129 overall. Now, last but not least here, their last pick was in the sixth round, 177 overall. They took a forward uh, from the U.S., Liam Gorman. So those are your 2018 NHL draft selections for the Penguins. Obviously, they're a little bit lower on picks, but for a team like the Penguins, who's been winning championships and been contending for Stanley Cups for the last number of years, obviously they've had to acquire a lot of assets uh, near the deadline and whatnot to help them get there. Uh, and that does mean sometimes giving up your draft picks. When you're winning at that level, uh, sometimes you don't mind giving up the, the future a little bit for the winning for today, uh, which obviously is the approach they've taken. But as things kind of change here with the Penguins and as some of their core players do get a little bit older, hopefully they can hang on to some of those selections so they can get a, a, you know, a higher draft pick to maybe stock some higher level prospects to keep planning ahead for the future for guys who can take over for Malkin and Crosby here down the road.
So again, I'd like to thank Justin from Yinzer on Hockey for coming on and sharing his thoughts on some of the Penguins' prospects. Again, if you're not familiar with his channel already, I highly recommend you go check him out and consider subscribing. His link is down below in the description. If you're new to the channel here, I hope you consider subscribing as well. We cover all 31 NHL teams, and there's plenty of content here for all hockey fans to enjoy. So if you're new, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the like button as well. I'd really appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you very much for watching, everybody. We will catch you next time.